guys, this is Lou from Lou Paints. I'm the miniature painting coach and we're going to paint more miniatures today. I have my cat underneath my feet here. Hey Pache. And I can't really leave her alone because she just had surgery and so she has to stay with me. I hope you guys don't mind her meowing. Meow. Oh. Well, okay, so let's just uh, kind of place this here. Um, Hopefully it's low enough so this time you guys can actually see what's going on down here uh, on my uh, on my tissue paper it's, uh, or towelette, I think this is what this is called and I'll just kind of take my brush and you can kind of see me uh, lick it onto here uh, at certain times while still being able to see uh, what I'm doing at the camera back here. Alright, so mm, my palette is right here. Let's just kind of take a look at the colors real quick. So just pointing these out, these are golden paints. And there's the uh, uh, list down here about what paints and brushes that you can check out. There's going to be a color uh, reference, a color wheel reference, like right at the top there. So you guys can f look at that. And then, of course, you guys can look over here to kind of see where my hands are moving and like what's going on. Because I might go and fetch something from my shelf. And if you guys need to see what's, what's uh, that about, you know, that's that. And <coughs> there is uh, this our reference. Uh, like I said down here, now, this is the Don Glare Invoker from the Magic Get the Gathering. I believe it's a 2010 card, it's a white card, and this will be our reference for the Betronian Sorceress uh, that we'll be painting. Now, um, her clothing will be for the most part a translucent green with a kind of like green uh, effect to it. And you can kind of see how since the last couple of sessions that's kind of already taking place. And I'm not satisfied with it. I'm never satisfied. <laughs> so um, what we're going to do is we're really going to make that shine uh, hit off by getting our lights and shadows right. So we are going to add uh, a little bit more black ink. But we're, I'm just going to cheat a bit. And for just for this episode, because um, some of you guys have been kind of following me. And uh, I think... I'm curious about what more paints have I been using. So this is a, they call it FW inks in the US, I think, but really it's from the company is De La Rowney. Uh, so this is the uh, Maroon Antelope. I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay, there we go. Maroon Antelope 222 or Antelope Brown. And this is the Purple Lake um, or Prepare Lac, I think it's like 437. And we're going to shake this up and we're going to mix them on these on this palette of ours but we're going to be really careful about it because these paints um i've diluted them but yet they're still extremely potent and i mean extremely potent so i'm just gonna put a little bit down here like so see because um f they around me they make some really powerful inks like you can use these inks for anything for canvas painting for airbrushing for for anything really and these the saturation of it is extremely high uh, and so why is that important to know because if you use them to mix your the rest of your paints um, to wet blend uh, to mix to tin for anything really I mean it's about the art of mixing paints after all then you can get a really good effect uh, on your miniature now before we go ahead and mix that let's just kind of leave our palette alone and just to kind of recap on what uh, paints we're using we're using golden's teal we're using golden's uh, what is it called again it's called cadmium yellow this is a uh, white from game color that white uh, Vallejo, these are golden magenta, uh, this golden turqu uh, turquoise, Vallejo, Vallejo, Tefalo, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, this is our inks, and then this is uh, the Liquitex slow drying medium. You can see it's kind of like spooshed down here a little bit. I'm not quite sure what happened there. And so you can kind of, as soon as you can, guys can kind of see what's going on here, my uh, wet palette's Kind of emptying out because of how hot this country is so when that happens right i have a pretty deep palette so my palette is about like this uh, uh this uh deep 
So what I do is I still keep a pipette around. So this pipette, and I have some clean water over here. I mean, it just has kind of some flow improver inside of it. So what I do is I really just um, take the pipette from the water and I just kind of put it down here. And essentially what happens is, um, well, I mean, it fills it up. And I just do this for the sake of convenience. I don't take dirty, my dirty water and put it in here. You never want to do that because you don't know um, what, what you've done with that and you don't want the inks to kind of rise up into your sponges because it's really difficult to get rid of them. Um, and like it's difficult to wash uh, plastic once they've kind of stuck on the sponge. So this is one way that I use to hydrate my, uh, my palette uh, without having to kind of move it around and I generally don't like to have a pretty uh, shallow wet palette which is why I don't I didn't buy any branded ones because when you're living in a tr uh, tropical country like Malaysia like I am uh, that's where I'm from from Southeast Asia you can't afford to keep going back and forth uh, every other day to just kind of uh, refill your wet palette especially if you have a lot of paints on it that you've already mixed taken your time to mix and you know, stuff to do with the family and chores and life and uh, job or whatever, you know, essentials. So you kind of have to step away from painting pretty frequently. All right, so let's get down to it. Let's do this, All right? Enough talk. Now for the painting, yes. So this is the brush that I'm using, one more, All right? And then it's my feather brush. It's a Princeton Mini Detailer from the 3050DG. Um, group, I think, the series. Oh, my cat's getting a bit angsty in my feet. She kind of wants attention. Unfortunately, she's not going to get any. Okay, so let's just kind of take our miniature over here and kind of go ahead and mix this up a little bit. All right, kind of leave that there. And we're going to zoom in so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. All right, uh, let's just make sure this camera is in order. And we're going to actually glob this over all the places that we don't want to get light we're gonna make sure to glob this over well and so like so and I'm gonna make sure to mark that base as well so I know where the lighting is coming from this is not the the color of the ground so I need to keep that in mind and notice how it's still a brown even though I had mixed the um, the brown antelope or the maroon antelope, which is more accurate, because um, it, it does have a little bit of a reddish hue to it, into the purple, and it's still so brown. Like that's just how strong uh, it is. I mean, what, what's going to happen when you add purple into brown? It becomes more brown, but it changes its hue slightly to the red side. So. Uh, to the magenta side, which is more accurate in terms of color theory. But hey, all that theory aside, let's just kind of get these paints on here. So this will not get as much light, uh, unfortunately, so we're just kind of do it like that. And you can see that I kind of left at the top. That's because we need to make sure to maintain that shadow over here. So you, com you guys will constantly see me do this, where I'm drawing, a li drawing lines, um, so I, let me just kind of find a more smaller brush to show this. So I would be drawing lines. So in, this would be a line to demonstrate where the light is coming from. Because she's casting a spell, I need to make sure to get the impression. So I'm measuring in this way to make sure I know where the light is coming from. And then I can see what's going to get affected and what's not. And because it's, um, I mean, light affects everywhere that it touches that you can see so even places like let's say down here uh, there is going to be some shadow but not quite so I need to tin a little bit so I'm just gonna tin and then place it on here and that would actually be more than enough that would actually be crazily more than enough because it's not going to be that uh, dark down here not at all so we are instead, uh, and definitely this, we need to get rid of this from here. It's not going to be that dark down there either. It's, uh, whoops, cat fur, of course. Let's just go ahead and add some medium here so we can kind of dust this off a little bit and ease it off. Okay, so where else would be really dark? Well, um, we need to actually 
add saturation color to the parts that are black um, which is namely the heat down here um, let's see here um, here as well so around here and then let me just get rid of that auto focus real quick I'm so sorry guys let's go okay and then we need to make sure to get the ones in underneath here where it's the most darkest uh, and in fact we are going to supplement that with our, our pilot ink later what was that <laughs> some something dropped us in okay so we're gonna supplement that with our pilot ink a bit later and make sure that we have uh, a lot more of a darker range at this spot where I'm kind of brushing so we're just gonna mark that for now does this hair have enough should it be darker no nope. because there is going to get a reflection from that that sort next to it so this is as dark no nope, no nope, no nope. we are still missing a point and that point is uh, let's just make sure we have this in focus and then we are going to sneak this in actually this brush might be too big for it so let's just kind of wash it clean that brush take another one so I have this one over here this uh, rather long skinny brush which is they call it the monogram 3050M just kind of put that at the inside over here whoops sorry okay so now, um, what is the quality that I'm painting this miniature for? She is going to be on the table, and um, I don't. It's subjective, right? Like when you ask one person what's better already, and ask another person what's uh, uh, what what do they think is a display quality? It's really different from all painters because it depends on how much their skill is and how much time they are willing to put it in, you know, because uh. Even a painter that's really good might not want to put that much time into a miniature that requires a lot of effort. So, this miniature will still be played on the table, like all my other miniatures. Um, that I always intend to paint them so that they can last on the table. So that I'll varnish them in a particular way. But I al always want to have uh, some kind of a lesson that I can learn from it. Um, meaning that it, whether it's display quality or not, it's always going to be something I'm going to try my best at. And others can kind of think for themselves whether it's display quality or not. Um, because it's really sub subject to the person. I don't think that kind of parameter really matters to me all that much. So down here, which is going to be really important. That shadow. So we're going to stack that up down here. Pretty heavily actually. And we'll grab our so we also need some down here. Just kinda of rinse our brush and take in the nail before that ink uh, the ink runs up the ferrule. The one thing you have to be really careful about inks is that oops, is that we run up ferrules uh the ferrule of the brush which is this end really quick and you don't want that happening because it, it, it tends up to split the hairs. And even if um, the brush was synthetic, like um, Pilot's brushes, you still don't want to take that risk because it's just not a good risk. Because you don't want to waste money buying new brushes for something you could easily just uh, doesn't spend a short time to do. So is this portion going to get hit by light? Well, let's just mesh, measure it again. Let's see here. Okay, there we go. Focus on camera like this. And then we kind of want to peep. Let's so let's just kind of peep from this angle, so we can still kind of see that staff. Um, however, it is going to get um, missed out a little bit. So let's just kind of um, do this. Oops! Stabilize that camera. Just just kind of add the ink down here. So there's going to be a place over here where the light from the ground will pass off a little bit. So we need to mind that because uh, this this area that's uh, kind of like curved, this will bounce get uh, some light off bounce from the ground. But from this these areas here, but here's not that much because that part of the ground is not receiving much light from the uh, 
end of the staff. So small little things we need to keep about. We're also going to make sure that we will um, wash that staff first. We just kind of glaze over it because then later when we build on those uh, those bright lights and those whites, it will make a lot more sense. So we're just going to kind of get the bottom of the staff here, for example. We get the bottom of the mouth over here. And it's probably going to be a lot more black than how it is right now. Alright, okay. So just kind of rinse our brush, check back if we're missing anything. We're actually missing the area in which her boob is at, over here, right? So we just kind of made a small little triangle. It's not as much as I thought, so let's just do it a little bit more. That's fine. Okay, so let's just kind of see what else that we need to do about it. Hmm. Okay, let's just... um. Make sure that we got everything. Just kind of scanning through, making sure we got the. Hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we've kind of missed this point. So, so the reason I'm taking my time here is because I need to really make sure I got all the parts that are dark to dark. Okay. Now, let's get get off on this brush. Kind of shake this up. Get our inks here again. So this is our pilot ink that we had, and let's just go ahead and um, add a little bit of ink, like so. We'll kind of go back to this miniature, and then we will just make sure this area here is really dark. Now, what happens later on is that we will actually line up some of the parts um, once we want to get back the surroundings uh, and I mean that the bounce light that happens within the darkest dark that in real life if you ever take a good close look at things that are um, like contrast between light and dark there's going to be parts that have a bounce light that acts as a glare on the side that is dark um, and I might actually pop a reference in the video here um, hopefully I'll remember it's at 17 minutes and 30 seconds so just a note to myself here we go and then um, let's just kind of make sure we got that piece of the hair here kind of make sure we got the dark end over here kind of make sure we got this black side over here on the clothing and we want to make sure we have that gleam uh, knock off a little bit and then we'll just kind of brush the inside of here, just kind of get it nice and going over here as well. This part will be completely dark, so we can actually completely blacken out this part because it's just not going to receive any light. Okay. All right. Let's just stick some medium. We just kind of run this over. Do -do -do -do. Okay, now you want to make sure to get that on the side here as well. Alright, so we just kind of tint it out. And not dark enough. Darks are a very important thing to get in light and shadow. You need to really get them. They can't be any less, they need to be always be on the more side. And it's okay to make more mistakes on this part because... Um, is this part going to hit light? Not really. Not really. So we can actually darken it out a little bit. That wash is necessary. Okay, so let's see what else we need to do. Right. So, uh, hopefully you guys can see it here. So we just, just go ahead and do it like this. We need to make sure to clean it off a little bit later. There we go. Because we have medium on here. So now, is I ask, keep asking myself this question. Is the... What's still left that doesn't look as realistic as I thought for the lighting. And this shadow here is bugging, bugging me. So we're going to do that. In fact, we're going to do that a lot more. Can go with it again. And we still need a lot more. One more time. 
Okay. Mm. <clears throat> so my phone had just done charging. Okay. So, so notice how this sword here has that gleam. You notice? Now it seems gray and now it seems a little bit more black, right? So this thing, I want this. So this is a matter of satin varnish. Uh, and this is going to be so important in order to uh, show up for uh, judging in real life. So it's things like these that um, make a miniature in real life really look good. Because you see how some miniature painters, what happens is that they paint a really flat looking miniature and they put it under good um, lighting and they take a photograph of it. So what happens is that the I mean, light is kind of doing the work for them in taking the, the photo, which is great if the purpose of painting the miniature was for either A, doing box art, or B, is for um, kind of holding off on Instagram as a portfolio, right? But if you, like for me, I plan to use this miniature on the board. And so I can't uh, slack off uh, lighting like that because if if I do that, like, and people look at it in real life and they see like, hey, wait a minute, this miniature doesn't match up with how it looks like on Instagram and that's, that's going to be a big doo-doo. So um, some people are really tangy about stuff like that. And uh, I personally am as well with my own miniatures. And you kind of have to figure out where your quota lies for yourself. Uh, because, you know, you know your priorities a lot more better than anybody else. Okay, so now I am also going to uh, add this. But yeah, if I was ever doing box art for miniatures, I'd probably cut myself some slack and just kind of like... Uh, go easy at it with the uh, light and shadow because light and shadow is a pretty uh, dense art to learn like you need to make sure to get everything everything right with light and shadow it's not something you fool around with because uh, light and shadow when you if you take a flat uh, photograph um, or rather something without with proper li uh, lighting just enough to display the whole of the miniature and not um, display uh, like add anything more it's basically like adding filters to the photograph but doing it in real life I think that's a really horrible example because it's it's the fact of that mm, like you're not letting the miniature the art speak for itself and you're adding this layer of photography on top of it and so for me personally like if I want to make my Instagram look really good or a box hut look really good that I actually would forego light and shadow right Be because it's a lot of work like it's um getting light and shadow right is art fundamental 101 it's uh what I was taught in school and uh you you don't mess up with light and shadow man like light and shadow is something that you need to make sure to get done right and if you mess up with light and shadow like the rest the whole miniature just won't look uh, the keyword is believable and that's pretty important so for me right now as this kind of guys kind of see like I'm kind of going through a phase and get rid of this cat hair in the process <laughs> right I, I need to kind of take this uh, extra ends and I'm comfortable with it because essentially I've been like I, I I think some of you guys actually noticed from this camera up here that uh, I actually do uh, portraits in black and white and I did that for the most of my uh, earlier art life like my my strengths is actually in blacks and whites so you can see now how I'm kind of like painting this uh, shadow on the miniature's face over here because I need to oops this cat fur all over the place oh get out of here so let me just kind of put it here Right, because these 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 shadows, man, like they're pretty important to paint. So you can see how the miniature is uh coming to fruition with each shadow that I kind of sip in, um, and make sure that I count for the uh, the reflective light as well. So we're gonna actually spend some time over here working on these blacks. Man, my if if my if my teacher saw me working with black ink instead of using like just like dark browns and grays and like purples on my miniature, 
he'd probably say something or two. I mean, like, <laughs> it's like this. Don't you know, like, shadows in real life are not like black. Something like that. Probably in Chinese though. <laughs> uh, well, he'll ignore me and give me an eye, and he probably an evil eye. <laughs> it's how, it's how the I was kind of. This is how the interactions went in art school, at least my art school anyways, so... Oh, nice. When did that brush mark happen on the face? That's interesting. That's really interesting. That's something challenging for me to clean up there. So let's just kind of go at it step by step. Probably what happened was that when I was, uh... Um... Talking so much... They end up screwing over her face. I'm so sorry. What should I name her anyways? See, I do not learn my lesson. Oh, kid her. There we go. At least now, we kind of have a much more proper... Oh, nice. So we actually have an overall on the face. This is good. This is actually pretty convenient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus the camera right here. Um, and kind of keep that focus right on her face so you guys can see it. Can you guys see it? Yes. Um, can I hold it in a position that's maybe a little bit more relaxing for me? Okay, here over here. I'm going to um, just go over here and kind of add a dark note on the face. You guys can see that. It suddenly went all quiet. Are they ghosts around? Okay. You can see that her face is still pretty bloomed because of those uh, pieces, which is no problem because, well, I like to cheat. So what I do is I just uh, white blend some tiny skin tone on top. Let's see if I can do that. I might screw up or not. We'll see how it goes. Oh, cat hair almost screwed up for me. <laughs> I love it. Oh, well. Is this shadow even dark enough? Okay. We're off from the busy part. And then after this phase, we'll probably wrap up the video because it's already. Whoops, another cat hair. So, whoops, it's uh, almost half an hour now. Let's kind of do it on the side here. Oh, there's black over here. There. This part is a little bit too bright, so we're just gonna darken it. There we go. And we need to get uh, underneath her eyelid as well, so be extremely careful about that. Alright, and then we will add this annotation down here of darkness. And that's actually really important to have. The next part, we'll kind of take this. And we'll drop it down here, up here. And then, we'll shade it through her face. Really carefully. It's like operating surgery. Like so. Catching her lips, just enough. Annotations towards the eyes. You can see that it's clear, but it's not the kind of blend that's smooth mm -mm -mm. it's not okay there we go there we go let's so make sure we darken these parts okay add that black area towards the chin go at it really carefully do a bit of stipple make my brush dance just a teeny real bit down here, get rid of this highlight, there we go, down here, and now we will add a bit of black over here, over here, so we have a annotation, you can see that I leave a small little uh, line in between like so, there's a reason why we'll go through that in another episode when we come across that later, not now. And 
This is done. So this episode took a lot more longer to get done and we can kind of take a look at her like this. And we have made some mistakes like you can see that small little brush stroke there. But this video is wrapped up like we can see like oh my god like I I'm 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 loving the light. It needs to be uh, more refined when we get over to this side, but for now this is really good. Okay? So Tulu